Okay, so this is baby Sharina, and we're going to do her first baby bath. She's day five, and um, we've just checked her ID to make sure that she is the right baby. Um, and her mom is happy for us to go ahead and do her baby bath. So the most important thing that we're doing is keeping this baby nice and warm and keeping her safe and secured throughout. We're going to prepare all the equipment in advance to make sure that um, we're not going to make the bath last too long. Okay, so the bath should only last five or 10 minutes because a uh, baby is not dirty as such. We're just uh, doing this um, uh, to, for bonding and attachment and because parents have requested. So we know that the outer layer of the skin on the baby is not uh, developed, fully developed initially. So we don't recommend ba bathing babies in the first 24 hours. In fact, they're actually fine for two to four weeks. But um, sometimes if the mother requests or if the baby has had a particularly dirty nappy, then maybe we want to do a bath. So we do the bath in a warm environment. We would never have a window open, for example, something like that. But in this room, we've got a few people in here. It's quite small, so we have a window open. But in general, with a real baby, you will always close all the windows to a nice warm environment. You might even warm the towels uh, when you're uh, getting them ready. You might even warm the clothes that are going to go on to the baby afterwards. Um, you have your nappy ready, your changing area ready, and you will um, have your bath. Okay, so I'm going to give this baby back to dad here to hold while I get all my equipment ready. Thank you. Okay, so we will, we will bath the baby in two halves, the top and the bottom. So normally we do the face and the head, and then we will do um, the rest of the baby. So the first thing that we need to do is fill the bath. You only need about five centimetres of water. You don't need to fill the bath up very high or anything like that. It's just enough for you to sip the baby in and enough to splash the baby around. I might just pop a little bit more water into this bath. Mm -hmm. Okay. We will be wearing an apron and gloves. Okay, because this is a newborn baby, there might be body fluids on the baby, so we need to use universal precautions. I'm too hot, so I'm not going to wear this uh, apron. But in reality, in the hospital, you will wear um, something like this to cover your uniform and to protect you from um, any splashes of body fluids. Okay, I'll get a different one. Okay. So we need to make sure that the water temperature is okay. And if you have a mixer tap like this, which is hot and cold in one tap, then usually it's mixed just fine. But if you have two separate taps, hot and cold, then maybe you'll get a pool of hot water or a pool of cold water. And if you do, then you need to mix it around. Then you test the water with your elbow. So you will check that's freezing, but we'll pretend it's between 37 and 37.5. So it's perfect for the baby. And some people have a bath thermometer, so you could actually pop a thermometer in there if you want to be really correct and check the temperature for the baby. Okay, so we have everything set up. Now we can take baby Sharina. Thank you. And we will bring her over here to the changing area and we will strip her down. So we will just remove her baby grow and we will leave her nappy on. And we'll be talking to her the whole time and talking to the parents, answering any questions, if there's anything that you want to ask me. Is that okay? I'll just do her dirty one there. So this is Sharina. Hello, Sharina. <laughs> nice to meet you. So we will just educate the parents as we go along as well. So just to tell you that the eyes, sometimes there might be some um, discharge from the eyes. Maybe there might be a bloodshot or there might be yellow um, pus coming from the eyes. And in that case, we would clean the eyes but normally we actually don't need to do anything specific with the eyes. So we're going to keep the baby nice and warm and nice and secure. I'm going to swaddle the baby and just wrap her like this. And we're going to do her face um, first, her face and her head. Okay, so I'm going to tuck her under my arm in a rugby ball position. <laughs> And I'm going to bring her over here and I'm just going to get some hot wood and some water. And I'm talking to her, maybe she's crying at this stage, maybe she's not. We're just going to get some cotton wool and we're just going to wash our 
furrowed her face just to get some water on so she kind of understands what we're doing. And we'll just wash her face. Sometimes under the chin there might be some breast milk, some milk. If she's um, been dribbling a bit, maybe she's had a vomit. So we just go into all the creases here and make sure that's nice and clean. If we are cleaning her eyes, then we'll do one from the inside to the outside. And another from the inside to the outside. Maybe she'll be crying at this stage and she wants you to dry her eyes because she's a real baby. And mm. <laughs> you might need to dry them. And then if you're washing the hair at this stage, you can use water. If your baby has a lot of hair, then maybe you want to use some shampoo. We'll just pretend that this is baby shampoo. So we try to use products which are very um, kind to the skin with minimal chemicals, minimal sulfates, and things like that. And we'll do a nice lather for the baby, get the bubbles up. Maybe you'll be singing to the baby if you're the mom at home. And just enjoy it because this is a social event. It's not, um, uh, you know, we're just enjoying it it's for bonding. Okay? So now, just rinse that off. Maybe then you want to rinse the baby's hair um, with a jug if, you, if there's a lot of suds like this. This is not very realistic. Okay, so bring the baby back over here. And if you have a hooded towel, sometimes the babies have these really nice hooded towels, then maybe you want to um, put the hood over their head and dry. Okay, so now we're coming to the bottom part and we have to see what's going on in this nappy. What's going on? Is it wet? Is it dirty? Is there a surprise for me in here? No, there's no surprise, but maybe it's wet. Maybe she's done some wet. If it's wet, obviously as a midwife, we're documenting everything, we're noting everything, and we're, th we're asking the parents as well, when did she last have a bowel open? When did she last wet her nappy? For the hold, we're going to hold her around, we're gonna cradle her back of her head under her neck, and we're gonna wrap our fingers around the shoulder um, and under that arm. Okay, and we're going to take her legs um, like this and bring her into the bath. Okay, so she can sit into the bath here um, and we don't let her go, okay? We support her head and we make sure that she's not going to get fully submerged in the water. Her head should always be completely supported. And then we can just splash up around her, clean her. Um, sometimes you might like to use a sponge if you're, um, if you're a flannel. And we'll just pretend that this is like a family or something, just to wash around her chest and that she can enjoy the water. She's loving it. She's so calm. Oh, she's loving it. Okay. And then you might need to go again into the creases down here just to make sure that that's nice and clean. Then around her feet and just completely clean her. With the cord, at this stage she's day five. Normally the cord falls off between five and 15 days. Uh, it's okay to touch, it's not like painful or something, but you don't necessarily need to clean around it. In my experience on day five, there will be some crusting around here or something. And sometimes if it, if it isn't um, dry and about to fall off, then you might need to get uh, again a piece of cotton wool and just um, literally with water, no soap or anything, just clean around the umbilical cord to make sure it's nice and clean. But you don't need to use any um, particular you don't really need to go fiddling with the cord or anything like that okay so that should be clean and dry afterwards and fall off five to fifteen days the umbilical cord okay so now we want to wash the baby's back so we're going to turn the baby over which looks really easy but in a real baby they will be um mm -hmm. moving around a lot and we will do their back so we can again find our flannel just the bottom half obviously has a different flannel to the top half, making sure that you're keeping everything clean and minimizing risk of infection, washing the bottom, and then bringing the baby back again and holding them under the arm. So this is how we hold them. The arm goes under their neck and their um, hand catches like this. Okay, so baby's nice and had a lovely time now. Fabulous, splash splash. Now we're going to bring the baby back over and to clean and um, dry them off quite quickly. The whole thing is very quick, only a few minutes. 
um, and again it's bonding, answering the parents questions and then obviously now we need to change their nappy. So we will have another towel just here, so that's now the wet towel, so we'll remove the wet towel and we will put the dry towel underneath. And keep them nice and warm. Sometimes you might have forgotten to get everything ready, but if you have a nice changing area, you should have everything to hand. And um, so baby's nice and clean now. We're just going to pop on a nappy and dress the baby up. Uh, if the if you're in the hospital and you're having difficulty feeding or something like that, it might be an opportunity to do skin to skin and try to breastfeed initially after the bath, because the baby might be nice and alert. So we just pop on the nappy, which I make look very easy there, <laughs> but I will show you. So I should have held up the nappy to show you. The front has a coloured part and the back is white. There is a blue line down the middle here, which is maybe not so obvious on all the nappies. But that line goes blue only when there's urine. OK, so there will be a line there. So the front part is like that. And the back part has the tabs and then you tie them by fastening the tabs in the front. You can put, turn the top down underneath the umbilical cord, okay, because the cord needs to be kept clean and dry. And then we can dress up the baby. So I'll put the clean one on. Um, it's a good opportunity as well to talk to the parents about anything to do with the baby, like ask them about obviously the feeding, their nappies. Maybe you want to talk to them if they're going home about sort of infant death syndrome about the, the guidance for a safe sleep um, so you advise the, them to have the baby always sleep on the flat of their back with their feet to the foot of the cot no smoking around the baby always wash your hands when you're handling the baby um, and <clears throat> you might advise them to ask visitors not to kiss the baby because of risk of heart patient um, transfer and to just um, enjoy their time with their newborn really. So we're nearly done. We've checked that the ID is intact because we're still in the hospital. So we're making sure that the baby still has all their IDs intact um, and that the baby is nice and warm. And if you've noted any concerns along the way, thank you Sharina, come up here. If you've noticed any concerns along the way, then you need to note them and inform a doctor. So maybe baby has had a vomit, maybe baby's tone is not so good, maybe they're a bit floppy, flaccid. Um, maybe you've noticed something with the cord or the eyes looking infected. Anything that you see during the um, baby bath, um, it's a great time for observation to really see the baby and how they interact. And um, you document everything and refer if necessary. That's my baby bath demonstration. Thank you very much. I will give this baby back to his or to her dad. Here you go. Congratulations. Congratulations. <laughs>